Welcome to this adventure of Wassel Science as we peer into the world of the sharp-spined rodents. Yeah, they defend themselves from predators. We're talking porcupines. Woo! Let's check them out on this adventure of Wassel Science. Let's do it. Let's go. As far as rodent size goes, you've got capybara, that's the biggest, then you've got the beaver, and third, coming in at third, is our pal, the porcupine. And not to be confused with the hedgehog. They're actually, their name is derived from a French term that means thorny pork or quill pig. What's on the menu for the porcupine? Well, good question. North American porcupines are herbivores, so they're chowing down on things like leaves, herbs, twigs, anything green, really, any plants that are green, they're gonna be all about it, including clovers as well. During the winter, they might chow down on some bark. North American porcupines spend a lot of times in the trees trying to find food, whereas in Africa, the African porcupines don't. They're not climbers and they're gonna forage on the ground. In fact, they're mostly nocturnal, but they'll sometimes forage for food during the day and chow down on berries, fruits, and sometimes even the roots of trees or farmers' crops. God designed the porcupines with these amazing quills. And they use them as part of their defense. There's actually three categories that porcupines will use when they get into that defensive posture. The first is sight, scent, and sound four steps to the aggression within a porcupine before they're usually gonna attack. The first is they're gonna kind of spike those quills out, like, hey, look at me, I'm big, I'm bad, and I'm tough, you don't wanna mess with me. The second step is teeth chattering. They'll start to chatter their teeth to, again, warn off predators. Then they let out this odor that's, that smells nasty, basically saying, hey, get out of here. I'm a porcupine, I don't smell great, I'm big, I'm bad, and I'm chattering my teeth. And the last step, the fourth step of aggression is to attack if there's no other means by which to escape. The spines or quills of the porcupine are really amazing. They're all covered in really thick keratin. That allows them to be hard to the touch and when released when made contact. They may drop out of the porcupine when it shakes its body as well. New quills will actually grow to replace the lost ones. And porcupines were long believed to be able to project those quills out uh, against somebody that may be intruding, but not true. So we're here to break the myths here on Wild Sides as well. Porcupines cannot shoot their quills, but when contact is made, they can release those quills into the intruder. And now you know.
God is so amazing. And as we study the quills and as we study the porcupine more, we find out more of God's incredible design. In fact, there it seems that there's antibiotics within the properties of the quills that's associated with the free fatty acids that coat the quills, which as an antibiotic properties, it's believed to aid a porcupine that's suffered a self injury. Maybe it's accidentally uh, caused a laceration on itself. And yet those antibiotics can help. How amazing, God is so incredible. And I love the more we study his creation, we, the more we find out about how incredible he is. God is awesome! Love it! Wow, what an amazing adventure learning all about the porcupine here on this adventure of Wassel Science. Just incredible. God created these creatures in such a unique way. Man, love learning about God's creation. Join us next time here on Wassel Science, wherever we're at always studying, always exploring God's incredible creation. We'll see you then. Bye.